You are now listening to Feeding Off Each Other. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and welcome back to the number one comedy podcast. <laughs> the Momity Cobb House. In Whistler Bike Park. At yeah. the Ava. We're still here. We're still at the Ava. It's I been am, weeks. I am uh, I'm feeling sentimental about the Ava. Yeah. Last night, I went into the bathroom, and I was just uh, washing my hands, looking in the mirror, and I thought back to the time that I shot here with the Coastal crew, maybe like 10 years ago, and we were shooting for their film Arrival, and they had me come help them with a scene where it was basically the day in the life of Whistler, and um, it was POV style, so we like had the camera mounted to the chest. And uh, the whole story was basically shredding in the bike park all day, going to the bar, getting stood up, going back to your room, passing out, and uh, winding up in the uh, bathroom of the Ava. Classic story. And I just, uh, you know, we've been here for so many years, so many great memories here, so many great trips. I love it here. It's a good place. Yeah. And they're taking care of us so well. The, there's so many bikes so many bikes in this building it's basically the hub for all the athletes and well is it i mean it is i mean yeah i think if you're most crank works pro athletes you're here and that means you have a very nice bike or bikes with you yeah you have like three bikes yeah one so, of a kind yeah so there must be like uh 50 athletes am i under doing it that sounds right 50 athletes that show up with at least one bike let alone the tourists who show up you know, family of four with all their bikes. And, and, and the brands, there's like a giant GoPro truck and like... Specialized. These, yeah, and, these crazy yeah. vehicles. Oh yeah, the, the driveway is yeah. just insanity. Very well organized, actually. They're mm -hmm. doing a good job of holding it down. Yeah. But um, yeah, so many bikes down there. And I gotta say, I'm impressed with their bike valet. Mm -hmm. They just, mm -hmm. you, you get in like within 10 seconds, you need help with that. They just sweep it right away and take yeah. care of it. Totally. A guy helped me with a room key at like 3 a.m. last night. <laughs> Did you lose it? Uh, no, J I left a room and Jason fell asleep. 3 a.m.? Sorry for falling Maybe asleep. Maybe like 2.30. Where were you at 3 a.m.? I was leaving your room. Oh, yeah, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> good good times. Good times at Mojo's. We were at the uh, Pit Viper ride concepts denim party. Yeah, yeah, with Spencer and his people. Good times. Are we doing it again tonight? Deep inhale. <laughs> Gotta I pace mean, ourselves here. Because we also have tomorrow. Yeah, we have a big day tomorrow. Yeah, we got Joyride, which is the penultimate event. And we're filming it. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. we are, we are going to film it. We are going to film yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we will. We'll get out there. I'm looking forward to it. I'm so stoked. When I see that slope style course, I, uh, I get excited, but I also get nervous. Yeah. Shit yeah. can go down, but also people are like putting their lives on the line. Doing yeah. crazy shit. It's awesome. And it's free you just go and watch it yeah <laughs> you just like can be in the whistler village and see the best show in the world it's amazing yeah i feel like there's some really uh, uh core memories that i have that's me standing on that hill watching athletes uh yeah throw down and dave yeah it's your first one it's you have no one. idea what we're talking about I, i'm like i was gonna ask what's slope style how's crankworks been for you so far Wait, 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 wait. What slope style? Yeah. It's oh basically Christ. it's basically a downward <laughs> slope. Uh-huh. It has a style. With a bunch of, bunch of jumps. Uh-huh. And uh, like a series of jumps. It's basically just that. Jumps or drops. Um, and you just do tricks. And the person who does the best tricks, according to the judges, wins a So it's more like prize. figure skating. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Okay, I got it. Sharp comparison. I took a figure skating course when I was a kid. It shows. Um, just want to point out, you're the one with the soundboard, and I've heard nothing all episode. I thought you had the soundboard. Didn't you play the laugh? I just played it off the road. Well, you guys it. both have soundboards. Yeah, but Dave has the, the soundboard. I know, but I'm trying to like optimize space here, and it's in my lap, and if it's not in front of your face, oh it's a bit God. of a problem. Excuses. Are so are you guys going to go off on the soundboard for Richie Schley? Because he's going to come in here like any minute now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, as soon That's as he a sits good down, actual rim shot and oh yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna text him now. Come in anytime. Room 114. We are recording now. Awesome. These nuts. <laughs> I'm excited. Happy. Dave said he played. He downloaded a lot of new. Our, our last guest on the podcast brought his own soundboard. Do you think Richie Schley is gonna bring his own soundboard? I do not. No. If he does, I will 
scream. Yeah. <laughs> Can you give me like? <laughs> Sorry, turn that one down. <laughs> I'm gonna scream. You did some good mic control action there, though. Uh, oh I God. naturally just kind of went away from the mic. Dave, yeah. you're just moving around that mule. I know. I, s- I know. It's <laughs> what, scary. What, what, what beverage do you think Shalai is going to go for? We got the bubbly. Uh, we have like a mule. He's going for the mule. The we have mule. the kokanee or a Smirnoff ice. Ooh, Ooh, definitely not the Smirnoff. Should we ice him? Just put a Smirnoff ice behind his pillow? <sighs> that would be funny, but I, I don't know. I don't know how he'd respond to that. I don't know this man. I have no, I have no idea how he'd respond to that. I feel like... Let's learn about him, read the room, mm. and bring him back, and then we'll ice him. Yes. Right. Although the problem is he's probably going to listen back to this, not even know that this conversation existed. Do and you think he'll listen back? Seems like a busy guy. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Okay. I wouldn't listen. He's a busy guy for sure. Yeah. But I feel like you still feel busy people listen to a lot of podcasts. Yeah, it's true. Like, you know, they got to f- drive places, fly places. What are you, you going to do to fill the time? Hmm. When, when do you guys listen to podcasts the most? I would say driving for me. Driving, uh, or, driving or, or cleaning, or cleaning. Like, yeah, like cho- like choresing, cooking, cleaning, driving. Yeah, actually, I also would add packing camera bags or unpacking camera bags mm. or packing stuff in my car. That's why I don't listen to that many video podcasts because I'm I do it when I can't be watching something. Right. If I can watch something, I'll watch like a movie or a show. Yeah. Hmm, fair enough. Yeah. Dave, I still want to know, how's your crank work been? Oh, yeah, it's been uh, fun. Uh, I spent most of the days kind of in a hotel room or in meetings. So I haven't really felt the, the work of the crank yet. We're but actually missing a really sick event right now because we're so yeah. dedicated to the podcast. Mm-hmm. We're missing the whip off. I have gone to parties, too. And I went to Dirt Diaries in Deep Summer. It, that sounds like a normal crank work. So it's been like mostly the nightlife situation for me. I've been like stuck in this hotel apart from the parties and the dirt diaries and filming on the mountain <laughs> and all the food we've had and fun times. No, no, it's been... <gasps> oh, There's a knock at the door. We have two guests. Come on in. Come on in. And gifts? No. <laughs> no oh, they're not, not gifts. <laughs> oh, boo. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet nice you. To meet come you. on in. Come podcast. on in. Come in. We are recording. This is we're on the air. All right. And and we're filming right there. So you are directly in front of the camera. But that's not a problem. If you'd Wait, like to we, view, you can move that seat. You can move the seat. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah move the seat. Here is probably safe. Is this live? Yeah. We're live. No, we're, we're not, not literally we're not live. live. <laughs> <laughs> you better uh, turn my phone off. Good to see you. You too. I'm David. David Richie. Nice, nice to meet you. Crystal. Crystal. Yes. Awesome. This is our first live audience, audience yeah, podcast. <laughs> it adds a whole new dimension. Yeah. She's not going to hear the sound effects, though. Oh, yeah. You have sound effects. That yeah, we have, we can we have a soundboard. <laughs> it's all really mature, intellectual sort of stuff. I've never watched your podcast, so I no one has. have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Or heard, no one has. No one has. Oh, you haven't launched it We yet? have. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we have some success. We somehow have negative listens. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Richie, who is this? Uh, this is Crystal. She's my uh, fiance as of two weeks ago. Wow, congratulations. congratulations. No, no one ever thought oh, it would happen, but yeah. She- <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're-, you're missing the sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had another set of headphones we could give her. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, so we uh, decided that uh, we can handle each other enough that we're going to make it official. Congrats. Thank you. Well, I can tell that you guys are madly in love from your posts. Madly. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed that you follow me. <laughs> How did you guys meet? Bumble. Nice. Uh, modern, modern love. It's the only way these days. Meeting in person. It's like, what? My, my girlfriend, Brooke, and I have been together for six, seven years now. We met on Tinder. Same story, kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was... Uh, it was quite funny because she wanted to talk and send messages. And I was like, look, do you want to meet or not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, so then she, and then she found out, I think on the first date, that I lied about my age by 10 years. But <laughs> <laughs> you overshot right? Clearly she liked me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, still can't, I still can't figure out on Facebook how to change my age back to the real age. Oh, yeah. You're going to start again, I think. You just got to delete it and start a new page. Uh, would you guys like a beverage? We have a 
stocked fridge. We got bubblies, um, mules, kokanees. Any, There's a Smirnoff ice. Oh, fine, I'll take one. Help yourself. What's the bubblies? Bubblies is just like a carbonated water. We got strawberry, phrase. No alcohol in that one. Yeah. No, I need booze. You need oh, booze. Yeah, here we How go. about a cranberry <laughs> mule? <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay. Yes, Mm-hmm. Or yep. Moscow, no, yeah. Yep. What's better? Go I mean, ahead. I'll probably drink them both eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll <laughs> okay. all go down the same hole. Guys, guys, I just realized this is not the first podcast with an audience. We had a, a audience for Haley's. Oh, oh that's true. Yeah, I and they wasn't got, there, and they got really bored and they left. They so were less if, engaged. She, literally, she might go shopping in ten minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then we'll get into the real dirt. The yeah. precedent yeah. will really embarrass has you. been set before. So. Yeah. Okay. So I want to uh, first let you know that Dave here, mm-hmm. not a mountain biker, okay. not a yeah. mountain biker. He's the layman of the group. Yeah. So we're going to educate him a lot today. Okay. I'm the audience surrogate if you, you're not a mountain biker. What's your story? I'm a filmmaker. Oh, okay. So you you look work- familiar. Yeah, I've been in a lot of the videos and <clears throat> right. okay. I've been working with them on and off for about 10 years. All right. And uh, yeah, we write and direct together and oh, do cool. all course, sorts of stuff. A lot of mountain biking stuff. So despite not being a mountain biker, he helps us keep our audience broad. And, mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, I also know. asked what slope style was five minutes ago. So. Yes. <laughs> and in the last podcast, he also asked who Travis Pastrana was. Oh, Correct. Yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's a bit of a rough one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Correct. He thought he invented sandwich meat. But yeah. yeah. Crystal's like, who's Travis Pastrana? <laughs> Crystal, you're my people. <laughs> With that said, David, because we were busy today, yeah. was the one who wrote your intro. We write intros for our guests. And, I, okay. and I researched you today. Oh, God. He yeah. also <laughs> refused to read it. So yeah, Jason, I I can read it. Jason's going to read it on Dave's behalf. Yeah, but, but Dave wrote it. And then I would like you to rate it out of 10. <laughs> On accuracy or how accuracy good I feel about myself. And yeah, how good you <laughs> However you feel. Yeah. yeah. Details missing. Okay. Subjective. Yes. Even tone of voice. Ooh. 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 Our guest today is free ride mountain bike pioneer, mountain bike hall of famer, free ski pioneer, BMX champion, a true multi sport legend, originating from extreme extreme sport hotbed Kamloops BC terrible grammar in this he read the Instagram bio okay <laughs> he became one of the original fro riders along with Brett Tippy and Wade Simmons after a career spanning over 30 years and going strong he is still one of the most iconic and recognizable faces in the action sports world ladies and gentlemen the one and only Richie Schleich play the sound play the soundboard give me something <laughs> Hockey night in Canada. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. We should add that. Uh, ten. Ten. <laughs> Dave, good job. Wow, you killed it. Well, because yeah, you just basically. <laughs> <laughs> you basically just. You basically. He wrote the intro. Read yeah. what I pat myself on the back for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you add some very lovely. Well, you'd be here, so I was like, he should feel good about himself. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> there was no mention of a Schlabel top, so that was good. Yet. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the Q and A. So, uh, hey, l- let's talk about how this came about. How how you got on the pod? I um, I I, I was just riding through the village, saw you and Ali Delulo, mm-hmm. ph- photographer from uh, out of base out of Italy, and uh, you guys asked me what was up, and I said, "Oh, we're doing podcasts," and you said. I've been trying to do a podcast for 10 years and I still haven't done it. It's true. I, I have a lot of um, long list things that I like to talk about. Okay. Whoa. What the hell? That was a weird that sound. Mean? It's okay. Shock, <laughs> shock treatment. Well, we all reacted to it. So you got to keep that in the podcast now. <laughs> yeah, it's in. Okay, good. Um, along with a motivational talk that I've been talking about for probably seven years. <clears throat> But I, I have been on a couple podcasts, but I, I, I kind of would like to do my own, but I just can't seem to get it started. So <laughs> you mentioned you wanted to start a, podca- a podcast, and then I mentioned that I loved your podcast with Brett Tippy on his podcast. And then you said, oh, I, want, I wish we talked more about the, uh, the current state of mountain bike, biking instead of the golden days, the golden ages. Or, well, Tippy nice. likes to, you know... Reminisce. <laughs> I do too, but yeah, yeah. Well, it's also just like <clears throat> one of the criticisms I have about our scene is it's okay. Pink Pike has a lot of 
shit talk, but that's just more personal, like one-on-one people giving people crap. But um, everything's squeaky clean. No one ever talks about the negative stuff. Like if you're, if you're into football, mm-hmm. you know what people make for, for their salaries. You know who slept with whose player's wife and all these controversial things. And it seems like the mountain bike scene, everything's just positive and wicked. And you're like, that's not real. Mm. So I kind of... If I if I were to do one, I would want it to be a little edgy, and people would like. I would I would like to ask the guests things that put them on the spot, and you know. It's interesting. I mean, I agree. Like, I, why do you think is mountain biking still too small, and everyone knows each other too much to do that? Well, that's a great question. I wonder if it's not based on a lot of the salaries are so low and too small that everyone's scared to lose the little slice of cake they have, you know? So I wonder if that has a lot to do with it. You know, you're, you're the best quarterback in the NFL. If you say something negative, they're not going to fire you. Well, actually that did happen to the guy. The guy that, that can took happen. A knee. Depends what you say. <laughs> I think there's a lot of like interdependencies I've noticed within mountain biking, right? There's a lot of collaborations. There's a lot of, yeah. you know, you guys are working on videos and projects and all kinds of things. So it'd be tough to burn bridges. Whereas if you're on a team sport, like the team and the corporation is hiring you. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, very, yeah, very much so. So like Westerland's making this movie right now. It's the history of free ride and the title alludes that it's going to expose some things. Nothing's for free, you know? But uh, I had to push him to say, can we talk about this? And he's like, it's your interview, talk about whatever. But he's like, you know, and I'm like, well, we should be talking about the fact that all this happened and all these people are making a ton of money off the injuries and sweat of a bunch of dudes that are killing themselves, barely getting paid, you know? I think that's pretty weak. For sure, for sure. We have, yeah, massive events, (laughs) like what's going on right now, obviously. Mm. Oh, yeah, I think, I think I just spoke on that. How yeah. when I see the Joyride course this close to the event, I'm excited, but I'm also super nervous because yeah. I've been there when people like break their leg, break their arm, and it's totally pretty heartbreaking. I mean, the best example is the Rampage, right? It's just crazy. It's maybe the top of the field is making some money, and then there's probably guys out there that get free stuff, and that's it, right? <clears throat> that's kind of tragic. Mm-hmm. So... So you're trying to shake up the status quo of more the financial side than, you know, the individual, you know, riders and people. Well, it's interesting because in our contracts, it always says it's um, private or whatever. You can't talk about it. Well, how's ever, anybody ever going to up the ante if you don't know what other people are making, right? And it's kind of like that right there is, you know, you know what every basketball player makes and all these different sports. So why does it, like Pink Bike did that... Um, survey you remember last year mm-hmm, or something mm-hmm. and they omitted the bottom pairs which who cares because that's zero and mm-hmm. then they omitted the top ones and you're like well then what did we learn from that article well, not, what not was the survey much. uh you, you remember it i remember yeah i remember it getting posted i didn't have much to do with it. i worked for pink bike at the time so i yeah. remember it was going on but uh i guess it was polling uh, athletes of different disciplines like xc yeah. dh slope style free ride whatever you call it and then getting their salary numbers in but we kept it anonymous or they kept it on anonymous yeah no names of no who, names no um there wasn't any real accuracy of the pay it was kind of a range it was right? a range and like yeah it was like one mil plus and then like maybe six to nine hundred k and so on and so forth all the way down and there was very few people making more than like in the six figures i think right yeah I can't remember it off the top of my head. And cross country was the was the worst. The, like, the worst. Yeah. That's probably the hardest thing you can do in this sport, and, and their pay is sad. <laughs> How many? And people, it's in the Olympics. Yeah. How many people are making uh, over a million? I mean, the only, the only instance I've heard of someone making over a million was Aaron Gwynn, and someone compared his contract to a football contractor. I don't even know if that is or was true because i don't think from a conversation i have see me keeping it anonymous because yeah. i don't want to bum any of any of my friends out uh i think the top downhiller is still under a million but barely but i think mccaskill and fabio Wibmer they're much higher than that so how have you done personally throughout your career because you are 
quite the businessman. You've uh, arranged many deals over the years. Yeah. Looking back. Uh, it's it's been do, pretty do, constant, do well? I would say, for uh, like a, you know, like a professional, like in an office or whatever. I've made a good salary all along, but I never made tons of money. You know, I made money on real estate. So uh, <clears throat> I think like a lot of people would be like, how does that guy still get paid or whatever? But if you span it out over the, the length of a career, I think it was fairly fair. Did you have, because I, I feel like you were probably one of the first to really realize mountain biking can be a business and you're a yeah. business person. And did you have a background in business or like, no, did, no you just kind of hustler. Hustler. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you're obviously talented on a bike. Like the yeah. first and foremost, you need that. But, uh, yeah, like what was that realization is like, oh, this is, I can make money and like I need to find this sponsorship and like that sort of stuff. Well, come around. it's crazy because my, uh, my dad's a construction worker. My mom was a housewife that had some jobs here and there. So I don't even know where I figured this out. But when I was 12, you know, we got a BMX track and cam loops and I don't even know who gave me the idea, but I started, oh, I, ha I had a, a friend in school that was a ski racer. And aside from the ski racing, she would go around to local businesses and say, this is what I'm doing. Will you support me? So I go to a hotel and go, hey, will you sponsor my BMX team? We need jerseys. We need $175. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're like, this cute kid. Yeah, of course, we got you. And then I made the jerseys and da, 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 da. And so somehow that was the impetus of it. Like it just was something I innately figured out. And um, then I raced BMX and, you know, in Canada there was no money or support for BMX. So I uh, figured out that you could apply to these big companies. So it was GT and then you get a support deal. And so they sell you everything for like a couple hundred bucks. You get a frame and all the parts and outfits and everything. And I don't know, I just kind of started going like that. And then I was uh, hustling to, to make my ski career happen basically and uh <clears throat> then i got a phone call and this whole pulp traction thing happened and i was like huh this is pretty cool it's just like the ski scene or the snowboard scene and we don't have that in mountain biking and this sport is so cool but it's just racing 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 cross country downhill you're kind of racing on a well at that point i guess downhill bikes already started mm -hmm. kind of but and I was like, there's nothing, there's no culture other than race culture. And so to me, it was just clear as day that this has got to happen, you know. For um, the Daves out there, what's Pulp Traction? Oh, so uh, there, there was um, kind of the, maybe the first time that this kind of crazy steep free ride stuff got documented was Greg Stump, who was a, <clears throat> was a um, ski filmmaker, got a contract for Specialized. And he was to make this mountain bike movie because he made really cool, culture-heavy uh, ski films that, like, what were they called? Uh, License to Thrill. Yeah, yeah, like, it's always the Blizzard a play on of words. Oz and, yeah. So he was, had a few things in the contract where he had to shoot their race team and basically did that. And then Christian Bejin, who is an important filmmaker in the scene. I don't know if you know who Christian is. But no. doesn't matter. Little French guy. <laughs> and, Big deal. Uh, yeah. And he, uh, he kind of said, can you take Richie to Kamloops because he can do a 360 on a bike. And Westerlin was there on that shoot. So we were both hired to go shoot the specialized promo thing because they did their pro racer guys and then they wanted some trail stuff. So we show up in Kamloops. Tippy gets wind of it there's no way you're shooting in my town without me, you know? And it's like, okay, here we go. So he tells all his friends. So there was like a town meeting of all the rad mountain bikers. And we're like, oh my God, this is supposed to be a job, not a uh, rodeo of fools, you know? So um, we go shoot some single track with Derek and stuff. And then we're like, hey, there, we got some really cool stuff. So we start going all this steep stuff. And the camera guys are just like, Oh my God, I've never seen anything like this. This is crazy. So that was kind of how that, this movie came out. A lot of crashes because a lot of, you know, equipment was shitty. We were breaking bikes on the shoot and everything. And people were sharing bikes and it was totally crazy. And the industry kind of didn't really accept it. They kind of went, this is ridiculous. What is this? 
So it kind of got shelved. And uh, it ended up becoming kind of a pretty important part of the story because it was the beginning, I guess. So, yeah. Did I answer the question? I can't remember what it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that was, that was Pulp Traction in, in yeah, a yeah, nutshell. Yeah. Definitely exactly. like started the wheels turning yeah. into that direction. Do you recall uh, the first money you ever made riding a bike? The first check you received or sponsorship? Well, well, I did. I did get some jobs like modeling. You know, like I would, like Adidas hired me to do a shoe shoot and things like that, right? But as far as sponsorship, the first real paycheck was uh, was more to do with skiing. I, I was sponsored by Smith goggles, so I got five hundred bucks a month, and it covered my rent. So I quit my job, and then I had these like photo incentive deals with Power Bar and a couple other things. <clears throat> so. I would hustle, work with the best photographers, and get just enough. And then I, I don't have enough, so I'd go work construction for a couple of weeks or work in the bush or whatever. And uh, but then I was really about to give up. Like I was trying real hard with the ski thing. I went to the bike trade show and tried to show everybody what we were doing and that this thing is getting momentum and had covers of Bike Magazine and stuff like that. And the companies just we're like, eh, we don't get it. How's this going to sell bikes? So I'm like, because it's culture and this is something that people can hang their hat on where they don't have to be a racer. They can just be part of it because it's something lifestyle and cool, right? So I was about to give up. I was like, I think I'm moving to the city. I think I'm going to, you know, go to college. <laughs> and uh, Paul Morrison told me, you're so close. Just just hang on, just hang on. So I went to the trade show. I think at that point it was still in Anaheim or maybe it was Vegas. It doesn't matter. Is this inter, like Interbike? Interbike. Okay. Yeah, that was the old trade show. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, came home and I got a deal with Rocky Mountain, deal with Fox Clothing, ski sponsor, ski clothing sponsor. Like it all just happened at once. So I went from, oh, I was dating a girl. She did my taxes and she called me the $9,000 man. <laughs> Oh my God. So I went from that with all these other the ski deals and the bike deals to like, I think that first year was like 60 grand. I mean, that was so that's $9,000 a 30 year. 30 years ago. $9,000 a year, not a week. It was a year, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was a piece of shit. That's, that's the price of half a bike nowadays. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, I'm, I'm curious, like, for those who. Uh, hungry young maybe young riders who want to get in a position where they are sponsored or supported what do you think is the best thing that they can do because that's why I asked what was the first check you received like right. if you even remember what that circumstance was where you're like holy crap I actually got you know yeah well, for this. well like I say I was I kind of educated myself to know what it would look like and what like, actually, I went with an agent to Interbike, and he's like, what do you want to make? And I'm like, I don't know, as much as I can, I guess. Yes. <laughs> and, then, and then he's like, well, what do you need to live? And so we kind of broke it down, and it was really funny. Like, we go to Rocky Mountain and say, we want 25000 a year. And then we go to Schwinn and go, like, we want 15000 a year. I'm like, where are you coming up with these numbers? He's like, well, you kind of told me what you need, so let's try to piece it together. And it was kind of ridiculous. But to answer your question, I mean... That was a different time. There was something new, so you couldn't really compare it to a downhill racer because they can prove that they can win something. And I'm, I'm trying to prove, well, me being on the cover of this magazine or somebody writing a story about me or whatever, it's got value. But if they are so used to paying for results, the, the results are different, right? So, so in that time, a lot of it was like incentives. So, I mean, it was definitely... A different space but I think <clears throat> what a lot of guys don't realize now is that and that's partly why I think I was successful is because it's a job and at the end of the day the job is to help these people sell stuff so in essence you're kind of a salesman right whereas if you're an Aaron Gwynn your job is to win so as a result they hope that works but it's not his job to promote the products so much it's his job to win the race you were promotes. the first influencer <laughs> somebody else said that and i was like 
fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Hate it. <laughs> Great success. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, I'm just thinking about the kid out there who is riding in an exchange. He gets a handlebar, not even a free frame, you know, riding for five years, crushing it, but can't even get a frame. I, I wonder, was it hard? Do you think it was harder to become a sponsored rider then when there was all the unknowns around what mountain biking was? Or is it harder now while it's so oversaturated? Oh, it's way harder now. Because at least then there was a question mark. Like, perfect example is Marzocchi. So they can't break into racing. Their, their fork is too robust and too heavy. So what are they going to do? What are they going to do? They see us and they go, okay, I could see that this is something that we could align with, that, that we can afford because we're not the cost of a World Cup racer, right? And then they kind of go down that path. So one of the things, like I had a conversation with Shandro, and he's always like, why do you go for these like brands that are not known and not cool? And I'm like, well, because they're willing. And if you help them get cool and get known, then they can see it. And they're like, great job. And then the thing builds, right? But if you go ride for Oakley, Oakley doesn't need anybody, right? Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things is to not be so caught up in the cool. And if there's an opportunity, take it, work with the people. And if they're willing to work with you, then you can help them and probably they'll help you. They'll make better stuff or make what you need. And always keep in your mind that your job is not to be rad. Your job is to help them promote their stuff so that they can sell more. <clears throat> and that's kind of like it's a funny time. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but it's a funny story. So uh, we're at the uh, trade show and the sales manager for Rocky Mountain comes up to me and he goes, what's your job? I'm like, to sell bikes. And he's like, exactly. And he walks over to Vanderham and he goes, what's your job? And he goes, to do film parts and do rad shit. And he's like, wrong. <laughs> so <laughs> you got to keep well, into perspective. <laughs> but you got to keep into perspective what the job is, right? Yeah. Well, well like for those kids who are riding right now, or a handlebar, do you say, keep going for it? You're so close, keep going. Or do you say, no, you gotta push harder. You gotta, you gotta ask for more. Cause I think a lot of people, they wanna ask for more, but they're scared that they're gonna push their, you know, the sponsor their client away. I think there's a lot that, that fear is in like many industries, let alone mountain biking. Or like they ask too much and then the sponsor goes to the next rider who can yep. do most of the same things and gives them the bar. Well, this comes back to how we started this whole conversation. Like, why would you pay 10 guys a thousand bucks a year when you could, you know, create one or two riders that you pay properly so they can really do it as a job and do a good job? I mean, I think that's kind of the problem of the whole thing is that it's like, the companies get away with diluting it and giving you ne next to nothing. So then you have the illusion that there's a chance, but there really isn't. And that's what's keeping all the pay down because I want to be a pro. I mean, that's the new generation. Everybody sees these people being successful at something fun. So like, I want that too. And then it gets super diluted and then nobody really makes it. They're all just mountain bike bums, right? So go to school and get a good job <laughs> and ride <laughs> your bike college. for fun. <laughs> get into construction. <laughs> no, figure out how to make money. And, and yeah. at one point, if this doesn't make money, you know, you got to be an adult and go, it's not worth it. If you're still a kid and you're pushing, go for it. Yeah, but try. And I think maybe it's important to know yourself, what do you think you're worth and what, what you're doing, right? <clears throat> and if you think you're not getting enough, then hopefully with good parenting and stuff, they say you're wasting your time. But again, my dad told me that too. And then he's like, well, you made more money than I ever did. So it's like, all right. <laughs> so I, I can't advise. <laughs> well, it's the funny thing where the, the successful person has this sort of confirmation bias because you just happen to be good enough. But that doesn't mean if someone else tries, they are also. Yeah. And I also think the interesting thing with other sports is they're mostly unionized, right? So that's probably a pretty big component right where the salaries get revealed and all that kind of stuff that's a funny story because we were at a, a slope style in austria years ago and uh derek westerlin was like we're starting a union we're calling it the fu the free ride union <laughs> <laughs> and i argued with him about it and you know it's kind of ridiculous but it, maybe it would have changed things but 
you know, it would have to be the mountain bike union because then mountain biking would just probably turn their back on free riding and go, well, we can get the same thing out of racers. And so, yeah, I think, uh, I think that for all these young guys that are uh, trying, I think they should go for it. But there's a point in time where you got to be like, okay, there's never going to be enough money. Yeah, what's a sign that you need to break up with your supporter, sponsor, what have you? Uh, <laughs> go on. It's happened to me so many times. I mean, the writing's been on the wall like over and over and over again. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I think, first of all, if you're trying to do a, a career like this, it's probably because you want to have fun. And if you're not having fun <clears throat> or you don't get along with the people... Like, I've always found my most successful uh, partnerships or sponsors are people that you connect with, you can communicate with, and you get, you know, you're on the same page. They see the value, you see the value, and, and that kind of thing. And if you're constantly uh, trying to prove yourself and you don't think it's being appreciated, and if you're honest with yourself and go, well, I am doing everything I can do, and I think I'm doing a good job, you just got to keep going, right? Right. I think that's a great answer. Mm -hmm. If you're not having fun, get out of there. It's kind of yeah. like any other type of relationship. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Wisdom. You got one for that? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Come on, Dave. Holy fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. Um, I, I, I want to get into uh, some Whistler talk. Oh, yeah. Um, you know my uh, username on the nsmb.com? Com forum uh, for like ten years was Schleyer. Ah, oh. <laughs> true. Thief identity <laughs> yeah. thief. I, I, I think that was before I even realized like oh, it really? was you. Okay. I was really young, but uh, lawsuit's still in the mail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> for what them using my name on the trail yeah. or? <laughs> I just thought it was a cool name. I was like, yeah, oh, nice. I'll take that. And then even playing like video games online, I used Schleyer. Oh jeez. Tell us about. Schleyer the trail well there was a, <clears throat> a woman running the marketing department here named Susan Darch and she was like a an angel you know she really got um, people and legacies and she was all about that and she uh, could see what I was doing here and how much of an impact and how much information and everything I was providing to kind of create what's going on today and she's like, you know, you've done so much for us. Like, let's create a legacy for you. What, what do you want to do? And I was like, uh, I don't know. What about mountain bike camps? And she was like, that's pretty cool. So we started the Richie Schley free ride camps, but that didn't really turn out to be. I, I was in that. Were you really? I just really? realized really? I went to the Richie Schley camp. Uh, that's awesome. Great. Odin. Great. That, yeah. <laughs> and then later, our. Oh, man, I'm going to have to remember the story. I think I may have won something there. No, I, I, I won admission to the Red Schley camp. I oh, okay. went to a film festival premiere at the conference center here, and my name was drawn. And that's probably the first time I met you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. How old would you have been? Uh, maybe, um, I'm going to say 13 or 14. Yeah. I had to change the camps from adults and kids because the, the adults were, you know, it was mixed. And then I had some regular guys, and they would go like, dude, like, honestly, we want to leave our kids at home mm -hmm. and come up here and get away. Mm. So if you have kids, it's kind of annoying. <laughs> and I was like, okay, we're going to do adults only. <laughs> and, and that was another handful, because then they come up here to get away, and they act like kids, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Drinking beers on the lift, smoking weed. You're like, like don't do this in front of me, please. I, it's a liability thing, you know? Like, oh. It's crazy. That escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, which camps did you enjoy the most then? What do you mean? Oh, uh, between uh, the, the kids' I, camps or the adults? The adults. Adults. the adults. Okay. Yeah. And how many, how many years did you do camps? Oh, man, that's a good question. Like, uh, probably about five years. Hmm. Little known fact, summer gravity camps were not first. My camps were first. <laughs> Claim. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so how does that uh, then tie into <laughs> the trail? Schleier, Schleier. So then we, she was, you know, she was, she was awesome. She, so she was like, anything else? I'm like, can we make a trail? And she's like, sure. So we, you know, at that, it was different that, at that time. Like, 
I could drive my own car up the mountain every day. I had a fob for the gate. Like I had the free run of this place. It was crazy. Like actually, uh, <clears throat> when Tom Pro became the bike park manager, I don't know if it was Dave Brownlee, the big boss, or Arthur, who was the mountain manager. Uh, they basically sat down at the beginning of the year and they said, okay, first thing, this is not Tom Pro and Richie Schley's bike park. They don't have free run of the place. And it was like, damn, it's been so good. <laughs> It was pretty awesome. So, so, and the trail crew was really supporting me because I was kind of the only pro guy up here. So some of the dudes would be like, we found a feature, like it might be something cool for your film. And they would show me and this and that. So then the Schleyer trail was a little bit like, there, there wasn't a lot of space. Like it was starting to fill up in the lower part. Garbanzo wasn't there. So they're like, okay, we, we can kind of give you this area. So go walk it and see what you think. So I, laid out as best as I could and I wanted it to um, encompass all the things I like so that's why there's some jump some technical and some steep stuff and whatever I don't know there's not much steep stuff but you know it so it was supposed who to, you're talking to yeah yeah yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah but it was supposed to be the the well-rounded trail that had everything and then there was always a plan to build lower Schleyer which went across the road and kind of under the Gondola? Oh, like where Clown the, Shoes is? And well, it would have been in between Clown Shoes and Joyride. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And I just couldn't get them to do it, but... Oh. Is that now what Canadian the Open yes. became? Yeah. Okay. Oh. That, that zone, yeah. I would have done it differently. Mm. So then I always get a little butthurt when they change things. I'm like, you know, can I be involved in the changes? But clearly, I don't really care. <laughs> Cool. So are you cool, cool, cool. Uh, proud of what you accomplished with that trail and the legacy that yeah, it's, cool. it's become? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, not too many guys have a trail named after them, especially in the most famous bike park in the world, right? But it's funny, people come up to me and they're like, hey, do you have anything to do with that trail in Whistler? I'm like, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> no, so I'm do, named after the trail, actually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Do people call you Schleyer? Yeah, it kind of always was like Gareth Dyer, you know, I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was, yeah, like, he was at camp. He was, I think he, yeah, or he maybe was he was camp champion yeah, or yeah. something. I don't know. Yeah. Both. Yeah. But he always, I think he started it, but he was a pretty funny guy. <clears throat> like one year, I mean, I got a lot of nicknames. Princess Schley, uh, all kinds. Of, so one, one year at the Rampage, he goes, dude, Richie came to the Rampage as Princess Schleyer. And he left as Darth Slater. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, I'm, I'm super proud of it. It's cool. I mean, sadly, there's no real benefit other than a legacy, which is a bit of a bummer, but that's a business deal that apparently we can't talk about. <laughs> now, I don't know if this is uh, beating a dead horse, and you've talked about it a lot, but I'm interested. Let's talk about it. A-Line. Did you <sighs> invent A-Line? No, but this is verbatim how the conversation went, which you've seen in the moment and stuff. The man manager of the bike park at that time was this guy, Bones. And uh, I sat down with him and Jason Rowe, the other guy that was, they were the two, he was the mountain manager, Jason Rowe was the bike park manager. And they were like, okay, we got crab apple turns, we just built Beeline. And they're like, what are we doing? Like, how do we get more people? And I just said, just build jumps everywhere and you'll have the best thing in the world. So I did not invent A-Line, but the concept that this place needed to be littered with jumps was my like kind of push. I was like, come on, you guys. That's We have all this technical riding everywhere. Who cares? You go up and you ride Crab Apple. It was just called Crab Apple and it was turns and people would just go straight. And you're like, okay, if you put features there, then people are going to, you know, hit the features but if you, it's just boring they're just gonna go straight right so so now i'm claiming crab apple too <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> you were you were the spark yeah you know well i think it was just pretty obvious that the sport was moving that way like jumping was coming more into um racing and and the whole free free ride thing is about jumping and steep stuff so we had all the steep stuff but just name a sport where you don't want to be in the air right like it's that's the funnest part of the whole thing so swimming so i didn't invent <laughs> <laughs> well diving <laughs> so uh from your perspective how have you seen the whistler bike park change before you um well i think 
it's super cool what they've done. Like I think filling in all the stuff with the blues has helped the whole uh, industry and the sport because it's, it's a tough sport, you know? So that's uh, a very wise decision that took way too long. Um, <clears throat> I think the moving away from the wood features and all that is a little sad because I think when you come here from somewhere else in the world, you kind of think about the North Shore and you just squish the two together and think that's what you're going to see. And then you're like, well, where's all these kind of crazy cool wood features? And they don't even have to be crazy, right? So I think that the crew is so infatuated with jumps and this buffed uh, ripping scene that they they kind of could do a better job of uh, bringing some of that back. Like, you know, what, what's the big drop on clown shoes? On clown shoes, oh, yeah, they clown made shoes. it into this massive thing. I mean, it used to be like, a scary trail, you know, and mm -hmm. I think, I think they're mitigating risk, but a line is a lot riskier than any of that shit. Cause you're moving two miles an hour and you're going to tip over. It's not like, but I, I don't know the accident reports. So, so that's the only, I think they've done an amazing job. Um, but I, I do think that a little bit of that natural flavor that we have on the West coast here is missing. So when you come here, what do you ride? Yeah, I was going to ask this, like, for those, who, like, you know, the bike park, like the back of your hand, uh, what do you ride? Not and anymore. what do you encourage others to ride for who are visiting for the first time? Well, I mean, where I live, there's no jump. So I want to hit A-line and all those things. So that's kind of the main priority. Um, I would ride Schleyer, but it's closed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why is that? The race? Because the race, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I'll go ride Fakrabat because that's cool. You get a long, yeah. long ride that's ah, fairly yeah. safe. That's exactly what came to mind is when you said wood features. Is that yeah. epic? And then, of course, the top of the world because it's, um, you know, the Alpine is epic, right? But that's actually a funny story. I don't give a shit. But. So <laughs> that was a conversation. Like, of course, the business mind and my thing. I'm like, you know, we would have these meetings and it's like, okay, we got all these downhill people. How do we get everybody else? So I said, you got to build a trail in the Alpine like they have in Europe that meanders and goes forever. And you go up there with a cross-country bike and you have a two, three-hour experience that brings you to the bottom. So then this is where Tom Pro and I disagree, but we're, we're good buddies, so it's, it's fine. He, uh, he started building this gnarly, you know, what the top of the world trail is. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what are you doing? He's like, this is a downhill park. I'm like, yeah this is supposed to be another product to sell to people that don't own downhill bikes, you know? And so even McSkimming and I talked about that recently. He's like, we kind of missed it on that one, didn't we? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Cause it, you know, so yeah, that was, that was a funny story because in my mind I was like, okay, hey, all these people that cross country ride in Whistler, they're not going up the bike park. They don't need a lift. They like to pedal up. Mm -hmm. So you get them up there and they get this two, three hour adventure that they're, would be their biggest epic of the year and that would have been kind of something special and different than what they already offer right so that's a miss that i really thought was a good feather in the cap to you know create a new product but they should, they should still do it i imagine you've been to many bike parks around the world do you think that whistler is amongst the best in the world well i haven't been to highland and i hear a lot about that but there's nothing else even close so it is the best as it far is as the I best see. yeah for sure. What's the second best? Well, Good like question. Leger is like that whole area, the Port de Soleil. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's very vast and big. So you got to kind of move around to ride everything. But it is kind of cool that you cross over countries when you're riding there and stuff. But it's not, nobody else has seemed to be able to make as much that you all come down to the same spot. So it creates a scene, right? So if you like the scene, it's very rewarding. But if you don't like crowds, then you'd probably be happier in a place like that, right? Have you been to Sun Peaks recently? This is a sad story. <clears throat> I have never ridden Sun Peaks. Oh, you got to go. I've wow. never Peaks. ridden Silver Star. And I grew up in those two towns. Big White? Pretty new. Revelstoke? Not their bike park. We just did a, a five bike park tour that I oh, only wow. ride by, by that I only ride park tour. Mm. We just, so we did all five of them. So that was a pretty unique, special experience to hit them all mm -hmm. back to back and What's the pretty best? much compare them all. Uh, I can't answer that. <laughs> yeah, no. Believe the fifth. But you, you do think those other parks have 
offer they're some all amazing really for their own reasons like sure. um sun peaks has this inc- like the jumps are next level you, just, it's just completely different than the bike the whistler bike park right. obviously you know the bike park here has a, a special place in my heart and sure. many of these trails are some of my favorite Sun Peaks just has this unbelievable flow. The people who have built that trail, it's just like it, the trails are so engaging. There's always something. There's no like moment where you're just kind of waiting around. There's always something. And the shark fins that they build, and right. uh, it's just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I think the, the same trail builder also built some of these trails on Revelstoke, and you get that same kind of feeling mm-hmm. as well. Uh, Big White has some of the like gnarliest like stuff rock I've tech. seen in a bike park. Yeah, rock. Because you're like in the Alpine right. in the bottom of the chairlift already. So you go up and you're now in. I've, I've seen some of the videos yeah. and shots. Yeah. And <laughs> Silver Star has some just massive jumps with like super steep lifts and also very, very unique wood features that you would oh, never cool. see here. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like maybe the smaller bike parks can take those risks more because it's a smaller ridership or something. But yeah, like it's really fun when you see a skinny on. On a bike park trail. Like, oh, yeah. I want to ride that. Well, I wonder if it's safe to say that maybe Whistler is so successful that it's become a little homogenized. You know, like the jump trails all feel kind of the same, just bigger or smaller. And then you got D1 and and um, Crab Apple Hits. But there could be some intermediate stuff that has, like you say, shark fins and stuff to get those guy, those people you know, getting the feeling of what a rhythm section feels like. But yeah, it is a little bit homogenized, I think. Uh, yeah, also the Whistler Bike Park is so big now, yeah. which is not a bad thing. There's just so much now. I used to know the place like Back of My Hand, and now there's so much that I'll never know it like the Back of My Hand anymore. Yeah, the Creekside's Creek a little different flavor, I think. Mm-hmm. But they did a good job <clears throat> giving it some character, right? Totally. Yeah. Um, what, what would you say is the biggest success of your career? In what regard? However you define it. (laughs) However I define it. I mean, without without trying to take too much credit, um, making it possible for free riding to be a valid thing that a bunch of guys make a living at, and, you know, bike parks somehow, I think my influence helped that. So just seeing where it's at. I'm a little disgruntled to be honest that i haven't been more pulled in and uh reap the benefits of it from some of these successes like whistler and stuff but um yeah just the fact that where the scene's at i think i played a pretty good part in it so it's there for everybody to enjoy because it used to be you had to shuttle you had to do this and that and you couldn't be sponsored and so yeah i think just seeing the state of where things are is i'm like i helped do that so, yeah. Now to, to humble you up here, on the flip side, do you have a failure that comes to mind? Uh, too many. <laughs> <laughs> Give us one. You know, one thing that I, I've been criticized for and I think looking back I should have chose differently was if I didn't feel like doing something, like there was a big jump in it. Cause my whole thing was, it was free riding and you do your thing and it's your expression, right? And so we'd show up somewhere once things started getting going and there'd be some big jump and I'm like, yeah, I'm not feeling this. And then everybody'd be like, what do you mean, dude? Everybody else did it. And I'm like, exactly. So why do I need to do it? I don't care. Like, I don't feel it. And I think those moments um, affected me. Like people were like, you know, he, oh, he's not at the same level or, or, or something like that. And the other one is, like, you hear all these guys, like, like Bear Claw. He gets hurt. You hear all about it. You hear the success story of the recovery and the return. And when I got hurt, I would hide it because I was so scared to lose my sponsors. So there's an illusion out there that I've never had a hardship in my career and I've never been hurt. And I've had plenty of injuries, like, you know, pretty bad ones and stuff. And I just hit it. And so everybody thinks that I just blazed through this thing unscathed and made money and I've had the easiest career. And I'm like, I probably should have celebrated it more. Like, I'm hurt, I'm out. And then it's like, oh, he's coming back. You know, Mm -hmm. and I just kind of didn't think that was professional. So I hit it. Mm -hmm. And I think it it kind of puts you on a pedestal and people hate that. So they kind of criticize you. So I don't know. Maybe that's 
the one thing I'm like, God, I should have done that differently. I, I mean, it resonates with me. I mean, you're up there, cameras are on, and you're feeling the pressure, the Kodak courage. Yeah. P- bouncing around in your head whether you should hit it or not, whether you need to or not. And it's like, why do I need to? It's yeah. my choice. There's no, if I don't hit it, then no one's just, no one's going to see it. But there's that kind of feeling like people have an expectation of you. Totally. And, uh, you know, us as YouTube mountain bikers, I think there's a stigma around that, that, you know, it's like we're walking around in, in Crankworks here and people are taking pictures with us right next to the real pros who are right. really sending it. I've seen that a lot in my time. <laughs> <laughs> so don't, so don't a bike fest is a hundred percent like that. Right. <clears throat> so yeah, I can, I can resonate with that. I, yeah. Yeah, I was at, at Sedona and this guy, there's these YouTubers there and, and this guy walks up to us and he goes, he taps me on the shoulder. He goes, Hey dude, can you take a picture of me with these guys? And they're like, not great mountain bikers. And uh, you, you guys were there. That was you, right? Yeah. <laughs> May have been us. No, actually we've never these been there, around. Dave. Yeah. And so this other dude leans in and he goes, dude, I just saw what happened. I want a picture with you. Oh, that's <laughs> like, awesome. Thank you, Shut thank up, you, thank you so much. Shut up, that guy. I love you. <laughs> that's that. Those moments have happened between me and Jason, where someone asked me to take a picture, and they're like, they see like the bear or the logo on my shirt, yeah. and they're like, what's that? <laughs> and they take a picture with Jason to, to make you feel better. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Um, that exact situation happened with me and Wade Simmons. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about Same that. Thing. But it was at Sea Otter, and uh, it was a very attractive mom. Oh. Yeah, and so he he was like mind blown. He took it really well, and of course, it doesn't really matter in the long run. Of but uh, <laughs> Wade's so cool that way. Yeah, he did. He did fine, but uh, it was funny. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> well, he went home with the mom, right? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, I had no confidence in that situation either. <laughs> oh, classic. I'm sorry to beat another dead horse, but uh, I want to educate Dave here. What's a Schlebel top? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, <laughs> Richie. We gotta hit it. Hey. Yeah. I, I love shovel tops. I, I always I'm always hitting those. I'll tell you the the criti- criticism version, and then I'll tell you the real version. Okay. So, if you Google it, it's I think it says a poorly executed tabletop. Does Crystal know what a shovel top is? Of course. <laughs> but the real truth poorly is, executed. yeah, exactly. The real truth is, is when, when this all started, <clears throat> you know, the, mountain biking didn't see a lot of jumping, and so even in the free ride scene. I could bunny hop and do a Schlebel top. So like, of course I'm trying to do a tabletop, but sometimes there's not enough air. Sometimes there's whatever. So it was just kind of style. And so the, the, the Gareth's of the world and all these guys that are uh, smart witted would like, Oh, do a Schlebel top. Cause I could do it off anything. Like if I was in the air, I could do it. Yeah. So it, it's kind of a bit of a, a robbery to me that it's got a negative stigma because it's like, yeah, dude, I don't need to fly through the air straight. I want to be stylish. So I, I always did that. So there's actually a journalist from the UK named Alan Muldoon. And he, you know, the Brits are very direct and smart asses. And he's like, sends me a picture and he goes, can you get this flat? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, not on a hip jump. And I'm like, Yes, I can. And it's this running joke we've had for years. And I'm like, screw yourself. So I can do a perfect tabletop, but it's just that this has become my uh, whatever. I mean, what is a perfect tabletop? Exactly. I mean, everybody I mean, I has their say, own style. There's so it's granite, flat. marble, <laughs> 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 mahogany. We did a video on this. Manufactured. Oh, yeah? We, we, yeah, called Tables Are Easy, and we kind of joked about the many different t- t- styles of tabletops and all that. But a friend of ours today was telling us about the friction zone where uh, online or word of mouth people with the bad energy uh, and the people with the good energy, they meet, and there's just this this friction. And it doesn't really matter about the good and the bad. It's just people are talking. And okay. so, I, you know, on that note, I think Schlabel tops are cool and I've been doing them for years all my life. And I always felt like I was like kind of like a one trick pony. And then I felt that pressure of like, crap, I got to like expand my bag of tricks here. And, you know, and I think it's super legendary that the Schlabel top made it into video game downhill domination. I did. That's legendary. Yeah. So Dave, I was the only free rider in there. Yeah, it was all yeah racers. exactly. Yeah. I'm super t- excited to talk about this. Okay, cool. Uh, tell us about Downhill Domination, the video game, PlayStation 2, and how you got into it as a player, a playable character. 
Well, I, I actually, somebody contacted me. <clears throat> they said, do you want to be in this game? And I was like, sure. I mean, I didn't know anything about it. So um, it was pretty cool. Like, we had to go to Utah, and they had to shoot your body and everything so that they get the dimensions and everything right. And uh, then they asked you a little bit, like, what do you want your character re- to be like? So whatever. And then um, we had to go to Utah and do a bunch of sound stuff so it's your voice and everything. Or so, to Vegas, like where the, the inner bike was. Oh, nice. So that was pretty cool, whatever. I, I'm not, I wasn't into video games, so I didn't really think too much of it. And then um, when the game came out, Gareth Dyer was living in my house and he liked video games. So he's playing it and I'm like, how come you never play me as a character? And he's like, well, honestly, dude, you're one of the slowest characters in the thing, <laughs> which I'm actually not very fast on a bike. Like I can ride stylish and I can ride fast enough. They actually I, made you slower? Well, then I, found, then I became friends with Lopes and I found out that he got paid a bit more and the only way he would be in the game is he had he negotiated he had to be the fastest. Oh no way! No <laughs> way! That's epic. <laughs> so I was like, I didn't know any of this stuff. Like oh. I should have said, oh, I have to jump bigger than anybody or whatever. I don't know. I had nothing, no clue, and that was funny. And then they wanted to unlock. You, uh, have you guys played it? Um, oh oh yeah. yeah! Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. So you hours. Know, you know, the, <laughs> you know how you can in the bonus rounds you can ride a sheep or a goat. Yeah. Or yes. Goat. So they call me and, and you like, can throw bottles at people. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you can kick people, punch people, and throw bottles at, pe- at people. <laughs> you guys are obviously good. <laughs> oh, no, it's super hard. We, we live-streamed us playing it a couple yeah. of years ago, and it was like, no one's having fun watching this. We suck. It's That's so hard. Hilarious. Yeah, so they called me, and they're like, can, um, can we have it that if a player gets to a certain level, they can choose another bike? And I'm like, well, no, because I have a bike sponsor. And they're like, okay, let's think about this. So then they called me back a couple days later, and they're like, what if they can ride down the mountain on a like a moose or a goat? I'm like, that sounds epic. <laughs> and so that's how that. Or a died. buffalo. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so that was pretty funny. But yeah, but it was cool. It was like a, it was an okay paycheck. It was nothing huge, but it was great to be part of it. You know. It's it's interesting because nothing like that to that scale has happened since. Like no major vid- mountain bike video game. Other than like phone apps, phone stuff. Well, is this true? I mean, there's a Red Bull gaming yeah, booth, and there's some yeah, there's a sick looking heard, mountain yeah. bike game. Isn't it like is it? Fabio's game or yeah. something? Is it sick? Like, I don't know. We should go down there and play it. Somebody was saying it's awesome. Oh, really? Let's get yeah, super yeah. mad that Schley isn't in it. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like tip over the TV. <laughs> Do you know if it's done by EA? I have no idea. I don't know anything. Maybe I'm too old now. Because one of the guys that works at EA was telling me about it, and I'm like, dude, you need an old dude in there. <laughs> On a goat. Hey, with modern <laughs> games, they can always add you later oh. digitally. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Like Updates. add two dollars yeah. for Schley. Unlock Schley. If I if I had an agent, I'd have him call. But <laughs> I'm I, I'm wondering if you like even realize the extent to, or like the 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 um how much that game affected our childhood. No, no idea. Because that was. Th- I mean, there was BMX, there was Tony Hawk Pro Skater, yeah. and that got us into, yeah. you know, action sports tenfold. Um, and then there was Dave Mira BMX. Yeah, Matt Hoffman's BMX. Yeah. And as soon as they announced there was going to be a mountain bike game, it was, like, unbelievable. So we had to get it. And, yeah, to see that there was a Canadian rider yeah. in it, it was, like, it was all mind-blowing for oh, that's us. That's cool. And we played hours and hours and hours of it. And, well, uh, yeah, and people also... Tell us, like when we live stream it, they're like, I love that game. It oh, seems like cool. everybody knows it. Yeah. They're, you know, on Facebook, I have like tons of imposters and a lot of them are like, uh, it seems like from Asia. And so I, I contacted Facebook. I'm like, how do I get my name? And they're like, you got to contact each person individually and tell them not to use your name. I'm like, what? And so I kind of... Like calling 911 and they're like, yeah, just arrest them yourself. (laughs) So I kind of went down the rabbit hole and I found like about 30 Richie Schleys. And I was like, there's no way there's more than one or two. It's kind of not the most typical name, like John Smith or something, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So no success. Well, what what do you think are some of the downsides and upsides of having a recognizable face, famous face? Well, I think... The level that we're at as mountain bikers is kind of fun. Like, it's nice. It feels like a pat on the back. But I think if you were more famous, I think it'd be annoying, Hmm. to be honest. But, yeah, I mean, uh, 
sometimes people give you better, you know, a little pass. You don't have to try as hard in social groups because they're like, oh, this guy's important, I guess, you know. But then the, this, is, this is a question I wanted to ask you guys. But then if you look at the pink bike crowd, I'm one of the most hated people on there. And uh, like whenever something comes up, there's so many shit comments and stuff. And I'm wondering, why do you think that is? It's a g good question. I have well, for one, having worked there, <laughs> the comment <laughs> section is always a hot topic of yeah. debate. And, you know, how much moderation does it receive? How much free speech do you give it? And how do you, how do you create a better environment for so people like yourself or other, other it's not just you, obviously, yeah, yeah, of right? Can <clears throat> post and like be like, yeah, I want to post my stuff there because I'm proud of this and whatever. I don't know why. I think, yeah. I think sometimes it's mob mentality. And it's one person or two people that started, started. and then everyone joins in because they want to yeah. be a part of the, the movement, which, and man, it's happened to all of us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're, of course. On, we're on the internet. And but it's pretty consistent when I put something up there. It's like, here we this go. Is it really? I mean, I'm not aware, honestly. Right. Uh, first thing that came to mind was like Nickelback. Why did everybody just start hating on Nickelback for some reason? It's that mob mentality, mob I guess. Mentality. And like, it doesn't help that people are commenting to try and get internet points. So they're gonna say the thing. People are gonna say looks like a session. They're gonna see that. They're gonna say the thing that people are expecting. Yeah, yeah I guess. Guess. I just was curious if you guys had a, a feel for it because it's yeah. you're just too damn sexy, Shlay. That's why. <laughs> yeah, Everybody, yeah. everyone's yeah. jealous. Everyone's jealous. Jealous. That's what my mom used to tell me in elementary school. And I got bullied. <laughs> if you're a if you're a pink bike commenter, just be nice. <laughs> just stop being so mean to everyone. Yeah, well, it's it's actually. Yeah, maybe you should just come on to, uh, into our YouTube channel, be in a video because our our commenters are nice. Oh, good. Always, yeah, 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 most yeah. mostly great. are nice. They're lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's funny. <laughs> like when I got sponsored by AMG, they of course wanted me to do some stuff. So we put a, a little story about it on Pink Bike, and it was so gnarly. Like I don't spend a lot of time on Pink Bike, and so uh, a friend of mine goes, or I think it was Wade goes, you should go on Pink Bike. And see what they're saying and i'm like oh, really and he's like yeah okay so i go on there and i start reading the comments and i'm like i i mean there was some pretty funny stuff <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like i don't know if i should laugh or cry and he's like probably both <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like we've dealt with this for a dozen years on youtube sure. you get a thousand good comments and you get one bad one and then you're thinking about the bad one like all night like, what well, does it mean just like don't if it was like that, I, I wouldn't be even asking the what? question. <laughs> why, why do you think you get the bad comments? Uh, I, jealousy. <laughs> I think that's a big one. Um, <clears throat> I think something in my career I did or didn't do, which I'm not sure, has, has this exterior image of how I'm perceived. And I don't think it's the reality when people meet me, I think they have a totally different perspective. And so I, <clears throat> I wish I knew what, what I did or whatever, but maybe it appears that I'm cocky. Like whenever there's a, like you, you start, you led with it. Whenever there's a conversation about Tippy and Wade and I, Tippy's the clown, the fun guy, Wade's the natural, and I'm the businessman. No one talks about my riding. It's always the businessman. And I'm like, I think I rode a bike pretty good. So yeah, yeah. in these stigmas, I think, carry and get momentum. And so I think that's part of it. I think people think that I got further than I probably should have. I'm, so. I mean, I, I, I say it as a strength because it's like you have the AMG deal. Brett Tippy doesn't have the AMG right. deal, you know, and that's what I'm interested well, that's what in I genuinely. Was funny was, and I have no idea if one influenced the other, but it's just so cool that someone in mountain biking is sponsored by a brand like that. And then yeah, next thing you know, yeah. Mercedes is sponsoring the World Cup. So exactly. it's like, oh, super inspiring. We're seeing yeah. uh, mainstream come into our sport. And it's like, why, why is this a criticism? Well, it's funny because it kind of loops back to the beginning of the podcast. How is there more money in mountain biking? You need the AMGs. Yes. You need the, yeah. the yeah, big, big companies. Oh. You want an He's alcoholic the beverage? Bubbly. Yeah. No. It's going to be in the fridge. Chris it's happy gonna, hour, isn't it? Get another Kokanee. I believe happy so. hour is every I, hour. I would take one in the world. if there was uh, more than one in there. Help yourself, Crystal. Oh, she's going for the smith. Oh, yeah. Oh, is there any more of your those? Your fiance's uh, about to ice you. He wants a Kokanee. Now, Shalai, have you ever been iced? Do you know what no, icing is? what's icing? Oh, okay. okay. 
You'll listen back to this podcast and you'll find out. That's all I can say. <laughs> okay. Whoa, whoa, what's going on? Oh my goodness. Wow. Uh, so for those listening, uh, Shalea is opening I'm a trying. Smirnoff ice with the rim of a empty Mule it's aluminum can. <laughs> and I'm fearing that he's going to slice yourself. his finger. Hey, wait, 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 Shalea. Oh, oh nice. wow. Dude, that was I've been, impressive. I've been doing this for... <laughs> I was, was going to say, this is not his first rodeo. I've been doing this yeah, for no. 40 years. <laughs> I'm 53. I guess I started. Pretty I was early. gonna. Give you You're not 53. I'm 53. Uh, what? Two weeks. Ago. Let's go back. Let's circles right oh. back to that sexy comment. I was gonna give you the bottom of my sandal. The, but do, the dog poo bottle opener. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Definitely not wrong. Yeah, that's a good idea. They need a mountain bike shoe with that on it. Yeah, that'd be epic. Mm -hmm. Um, I. Uh, is it true that you are big in Germany? Uh, I heard I, that I, the Germans love you. I'm small everywhere, <laughs> except down there. <laughs> Crystal? <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm small down no, there? I mean, you're good there. <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, I, I, we can I, use a better one. Oh. Daddy, yes! <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, think... The uh, Europeans love you. They got love, for sure. Yeah. 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 I think uh, there's a few factors, and this is actually goes back to... <clears throat> Maybe how I handled my career, I could have handled it one way or the other. But um, I think there's a few things like, uh, I'll just say it. The German culture is kind of a poser culture. Uh, a little bit like everybody's fashion forward. I mean, if you've ever been there, all mountain bikers do not wear black t-shirts and shorts. They look good. Like Can pros. I stop you there for one sec? Germany is one of our top three biggest demographics, and they mostly buy a lot of our merch. We love Shout Germany. Out Germany. Yeah. We love you. Oh, of course. They've yeah. never done anything wrong in your, history. Your <laughs> duty <laughs> system and the vax and all that, terrible. But anyways, so, come on. Okay, so let me spin this positive side of the poser culture is that everyone looks good. They dress well. Mm. They look tidy. They match. Like They're very stylish, fashionable people. And so, I mean, I have a German last name. I don't know if that helped. Probably subconsciously it had to, you know, sort mm -hmm. of thing. And then when we start going over there, like, it's like in the moment movie, like Tippy and Wade are wearing like an orange jersey with red shorts. And I match. Everyone knows that. I was <laughs> in the bike park yesterday and I'm like, am I old school? I'm wearing a mountain bike kit and everyone's wearing a black t-shirt and black shorts and cotton. I'm like, times have changed. <laughs> so I think that was part of it. And then... Rocky Mountain was huge there, and I kind of liked going to Europe, so I just spent more time and then kind of saw that they get paid better, the companies pay better and everything, so I just kind of moved my focus there, and I think Tippy and Wade really kept their image here, and they were always seen, and they were always around, and I'm over there doing my thing, making more money, but it changed the maybe the long-term visibility for me over here. So, um, yeah, I put a lot of time being there, right? And I'm kind of fun, so they like fun people too. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so I, I went to so many events there and did so much stuff and was pretty involved with the magazines and always got good play there. So I guess that all kind of helped. But I'm still only like five foot six and a half in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, it's somewhere I'd really love to visit and uh, ride bikes and and go meet our fans. Mm -hmm. So where would yeah. you where yeah. would you recommend? Like yeah, where, yeah. where should we go? Austria. <laughs> so not in Germany. Okay. Germany. Okay, so. <laughs> Sorry, Germany. <laughs> speak it's, German, a, it's, a, it's a running joke in in with the Germans and the Austrians that the Austrians are the better Germans. Okay. Oh, okay. I mean, Hitler was Austrian. What? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, there's some good bike parks around Munich and Munich's a super cool city. Like it's very fashionable. It's a model city. So there's lots of pretty people everywhere. Um, and quite close to there, there's a lot of bike parks in Austria and stuff too. So <clears throat> around that zone is probably the best. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I was just there. How was it? Eurobike. Uh, well, uh, airline lost my bike so the whole riding portion I didn't have a bike and then I went to Eurobike for the first time in Frankfurt and that was pretty wild like Frankfurt has a like a junky kind of district I saw some pretty heavy shit wow <laughs> yeah it was kind of wild but yeah it was good even cool. compared to the downtown east side I haven't been down there for a while so I don't know but it's uh bleak yeah anyways 
I'm sad now. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I knew that. All right. <laughs> Reset. How's the Smirnoff ice? Not as good as the mule. Yeah. But it, it works. Yeah. Thanks, honey. <laughs> it's a drink for, you know, 19-year-old girls. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been accused of that. So, so uh, icing is when you hide a Smirnoff ice for someone to uh, be surprised with. And when they see it, they have to drop down on one knee, open it up, and drink it in one, uh, one I've go. heard this. I've yeah. heard this, yes. I've never been iced. Well, we'll see if you get a second podcast and maybe we'll, <laughs> yeah, hopefully yeah. you have forgotten by that time. <laughs> Probably. Um, I'm curious about your, uh, your life in Laguna. Tell us about that. Well, I, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. The, the riding is good, but it's not like here. It's very dry and dusty. So in the winter, it's a little better. Um, a lot of steep, gnarly stuff, not a lot of jumps, which saddens me a bit and it's kind of an older culture so if someone builds a jump they try to protect it and be like oh you, you shouldn't build a jump there and you're like the trails are illegal what difference does it make what's on it you know so um yeah i, I surf a little bit stand up paddle surf a lot because i have to clarify because it's not as cool okay. as surfing okay yeah love it um <clears throat> yeah it's summer all year too many people it's America. There's a few negatives, but too many cars. But Crystal's there. That's great. I think it's an amazing place. Yeah, it's a it's a beautiful yeah, place to live. Yeah, California is. Yeah, it's, it's not pretty bad. damn good. Yeah. Miss the trees and the green. Mm. Yeah. Don't miss the rain. Uh, what's the temperature like throughout the year? Uh, like daytime temperature on average is around seventy five in Celsius, please. He's forgotten Celsius. 22, 23. In, in meters, please. <laughs> yeah, 22, 23. Hit us with Kelvin. <laughs> and then at night in the summer, it's similar. And in the winter, it, it gets down to like 15. Could, could be 12, 10. <clears throat> but it's pretty nice. I hope this isn't too forward, but do you have a guest room and can we come over and stay there for <laughs> upwards of a month? <laughs> Definitely. Okay, great. One to two yeah. months. Now, Allie comes, Allie DeLulo comes, and he stays for like, last time was like five weeks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. And yeah. who is Allie DeLulo? He's a Italian photographer. Funny story. So Wade and I are in Italy, and this kind of gangster-looking mafia dude comes up to us, and he's like a little bit shy, and he's like, hey, uh, so uh, I work for Marzocchi, and they, they said you guys would give me some time to, to, to go do a shoot, and we're like, who is this guy? And uh, so we're like, at, th at this point, we're at these events in Europe and we're pulled in 20 directions. We're busy, right? Like there's a lot of more demand. I mean, I go there now and I'm just like, but whatever. So uh, we go to do this shoot with them and the spot that somebody parked a tractor in front of it didn't work. And so we're like, dude, you're wasting our time. And it was a total failure. And he was totally sad and totally upset. And then the next year I come back and I bump into him at the bar. I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember you. Fucking guy that wasted our time. And we just had a great party night. And uh, he's like, you want to try again? I'm like, yeah, why not? So we went out, shot some photos, had a blast. And then I'm like, you got to come to Whistler. And he's like, really? I'm like, yeah, you can stay at my house. And he's like, no way. So he came. And then, you know, he's one of my best friends now. So it's pretty fun. Yeah, you guys are a good duo. He's uh Obviously, incredible photographer, and you guys yeah. work really well together. I saw you guys work together mm -hmm. on a Deep Summer show maybe yeah. six, seven years ago. Yeah, we just, uh, it, it's going to come out on Pink Bike soon, but um, I've been trying to produce these little short films every year. And the first year I did it with this kind of director, producer guy. And then I was like, well, I mean, I'm kind of managing the whole thing. I'd like to make some money on it. So I thought, well, I'm going to do it myself. And I got Ali to shoot it. So he shot a, a film for me, and I think it's pretty good. It's in the Dolomites, and um, we haven't released it yet. Just, I don't know why, <laughs> but we haven't. It's called The Draw. So we'll probably put that on Pink Bike in the next month or so. And uh, it's pretty cool because he's not a one-trick pony. He can do some pretty good video stuff, too. Did not know that. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't think he loves it. He just wants to be a photographer, but he kind of, as we all know, feels the pressure that he has to shoot motion. So... <clears throat> 
but yeah, he, he's he's great to work with. Yeah, he's got an Italian temper. Every once in a while, uh, you know, he loses it, but uh, in the end, he's just an awesome guy. I uh, we he joined us in Italy for a project one time, and uh, I didn't have a lot of money to offer him, and I I, I really wanted him to come out, and uh, I offered him something, and he said, "This is the lowest amount of money anybody has ever offered me ever," <laughs> and I felt like an absolute piece of crap. <laughs> so, Ali, if you're listening, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, yeah. I've learned. I'll get a bigger purse. Yeah, that's one of our hangout <laughs> topics is just whining about. <laughs> The pay in the industry. Yeah, I'm uh, part of the problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are are you um, settling down in Laguna? You guys have any plans? <sighs> what's next? Well, we I, I told you we got engaged, right? Yes. Yeah, two weeks ago. But uh, so we've lived together for years. Um, I don't know. We just went to Portugal, looking around to see if that's somewhere we could retire. It's it's an awesome place, Laguna, but it's expensive. Mm. And I'm a mountain biker, so I didn't make enough money. <laughs> well, where did you make your money off real estate? What, what, where did you buy the, your homes? Whistler. Yeah. Okay. I started with, um, at that moment, it was literally the cheapest apartment you could buy, those little places by Nestor's, right beside Nestor's. Bought it, got it, uh, sold it a year later, then bought a half a duplex in Spruce Grove. The market was just growing, you know. Sold that, bought a place in Emerald, Stayed there for a few years, flipped that, and then I went back to Spruce Grove, two doors down. That was a, that's actually a fun story. I don't know if it's boring, but <clears throat> my best friend is my realtor, and he pulls up to this house that was two doors down from my half a duplex, and I go, what are we doing here? And he's like, you can afford this. I'm like, no way. And it, it was like a dream house, like Whistler Blackcomb, 25-foot high ceilings. You know, I had... Uh, five bedrooms so it was basically a hotel for all my friends that lived in vancouver and yeah it was pretty killer but um sold that and i was like you know i don't want to grow old in the winter i want to grow old in a nice easy comfortable place without snow so kind of went for it you're still skiing though right like you yeah, yeah it's no. questionable questionable yeah like uh this year i bought the first pa- i bought an icon pass first time i bought a pass in probably 25 years because i used to get free passes here and stuff and i skied three runs where was that mammoth 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 is a bad version of whistler like it's not a great place to ski i'm sorry what is an icon pass uh it's one of it's I think Whistler is the epic pass. Okay. And Icon is the competitor because that's the mountains. There. So you can go to multiple resorts? Yeah. Got it. Okay. But I go to Retallic every year for New Year's. So that's my three powder days. Oh, nice. Whatever. And I have some rich friends that invite me on things. So last, not this winter, I, I declined the offer, but I should have went. But last winter, I got the call, you want to come to Alaska? I'm like, okay. It's like, one day. I'm like, dude, I'm going to come to Alaska for one day of skiing. And I'm like, I don't know. And I couldn't decide. And I'm looking at the weather. And then he's like, there's an Uber coming to your house. And I got you a ticket. You're coming. I'm like, I guess I'm going. So <laughs> let's get awesome. up the next morning. 18 runs. Uh, I think it was like 50,000 vertical feet of skiing. So oh it was God. probably the best day of skiing in my life. But I think I had skied three days that year, so I was not prepared <laughs> in these, like, 3,600-foot couloirs. And I'm like, I probably shouldn't be here right now. <laughs> but it, it was awesome. So I don't, I don't ski a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's, um, it's kind of novel when you live there. You're like, oh, a lot of effort to leave the beach and go skiing. But probably should because when the weather turns bad, you can't ride. The ocean's dirty. You shouldn't go in the ocean after it rains and stuff like that. So... But, yeah, it's pretty fun. I like the ocean. It's kind of become a pretty big part of my life, I guess. Yeah, no kidding. You've done a lot of gnarly shit in your life. Have you ever had any near-death experiences? Yeah. I um, I had a crash in Alaska years ago filming for this film company, uh, Rap Entertainment, they were called. And I, I wasn't super experienced with slough management. And the slough was pumping, and I cut through it, and it pushed me down, and I just started cartwheeling like... Two flips hit the snow, two flips hit the snow, and I knew there was a 100-foot ice fall at the end of it or so, and I was just saw my life flash before my eyes, screamed like, ah, you know, and somehow the pitch turned a little bit, and I stuck it, uh, like, before the cliff, and I was like, oh, my God. So I just 
went home, went, went to the highway, because that's what you do in Alaska, hitchhiked to town, packed my bags, and came back to Whistler. I was like, done. But, um, and then anyway, on TSN, they had the crash of the month, and it was on there for a whole winter. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, it was filmed. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we can look it up? Uh, maybe. It was, I, I'd have to tell you what year it was, but... Oh my god! It was a big crash. It was like, and that was the only shot they got of me for the film. Oh. <laughs> so it was like, hey, oh. you got a good airtime. So, yeah. w- what about um, on the mountain bike? I mean, I mean you mentioned death. some uh, gnarly injuries, but uh, yeah, what comes to mind? I don't know about near death. I broke my pelvis a couple times. Um, I broke my ankle in the foam pit when they first put the foam pit in here. Oh. Get a buddy to do the same dumb. thing. Yeah, we did have a friend do the same thing. Vanderham broke his hand in the foam pit. No way. Karate chopped his bike or something. Um, broke a piece of my neck early on in the on, on a mountain bike. Didn't you know? I came from BMX. We didn't the helmets weren't good then, so I didn't even wear a helmet. Uh, but near death. I mean, you know, fell off some cliffs and thought it was going to be bad, but somehow it worked out and stuff like that. But yeah. Maybe I did get off pretty lucky. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I st- pelvis and ankles. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, what did you do? What happened when you uh, broke your ankle in the foam pit? You land on the bike? No, uh, I was up there with John Cowan, this ex dirt jumper mm-hmm. guy. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I haven't done a 360 in years. And he's like, well, do it. So I did it. And he's like, you don't do it with your right foot, with your correct foot forward. Mm. He's been goofy. Yeah, and I was like, well, that's how I do it on skis. And he's like, well, I think you should learn it the right way. So I'm like, okay. I so think I have this problem too. I went off the ramp, and instead of spinning, I turned <laughs> and flew out the side of the pit and hit, like I stopped myself with my foot on the box. You know? oh, oh, my God. So yeah, crazy. there was a real issue there. They, I think they figured over time we better pad that up. And RIP yeah. to the Aerodome, no yeah. longer with us. Mm. It's no, gone. It's gone. It's gone. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah, it doesn't exist. How come? I think it, it was storage in the winter, right? And then they just needed more parking, maybe? It probably like, just didn't make much money. It probably either. didn't make any. It was yeah, like yeah, unknown. Exactly. Like no one ever really knew where to find it. Right. I don't think it was marketed that well other than people filming their own clips. Right. And then, yeah. It was pretty gnarly, too. Hey, like if you were a beginner rider and who wants to use a foam pit, the rolling even was like, yeah. Gosh, oh, yeah. We saw so many people just blow There's up. There's an on amazing the clip on YouTube of someone going down that completely uh, geeing out and just missing the ramp and running straight into the box. Oh. They were fine, I'm sure. <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> I hope. I'm sure. Uh, wow. <laughs> is it time for this or that? It's either that. I think it is. Yeah. Have you ever played a game of this or that before? I don't think so. Well, it's not like icing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the good news. Uh, we have, uh, who's going to do the, the this or thatting? Me? Yeah, you should do it. I, did I it could do it. Last time, I think. All right. Yeah, simple. We just have, uh, we wrote out pr- prior to the podcast, uh, this or that, and you're going to side between them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so okay. I just have to pick one? Two yeah, one or, one or the other. Rapid fire, just whatever comes okay. to the top of your mind. Mm-hmm. Are you ready? Oh, Crystal isn't going to be able to hear the music, so she's not going to feel the intensity. It's going to get very tense in here. Yeah. Have you ever seen yeah. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yes. Okay, well, just imagine the final music. <laughs> All right. Skiing or mountain biking? Skiing. California or BC? California, then BC. <laughs> There's going to be a fight later. Dirt Merchant or A-Line? Dirt Merchant. USA or Canada? Canada. Laguna or Italy? Laguna. Schleyer or A-Line? A-Line. Photo or video? Photo. Jumps or steeps? Steeps. Bike mag or decline? Bike mag. Trip around the world or trip to space? Trip around the world. Cranked or new world disorder? New world disorder. Magazine cover or movie segment? Movie segment. Interbike or Eurobike? Eurobike. Yacht or helicopter? Helicopter. Tabletop or no hander? No hander. Sandwiches or hot dogs? Sandwiches. Longhorns or Garfinkels? Longhorns. Enduro bike or DH bike? Enduro bike. 
New school or old school. Old school. <laughs> and finally, Tippy or Simmons. Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> well played, well played. Well played. Well played. <laughs> Awesome. Crystal just went, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Did he answer correctly? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shlay. That was awesome, guys. Thanks, man. Thanks Thank for you. coming Thank here. You. I'm glad I ran into you. And uh, I hope this um, uh, snowball rolls and you uh, end up making your own podcast. We'll be listening. Mm -hmm. Can you make any money? There's uh, my business hat. I'm not sure. In six months. <laughs> we, we haven't, yeah, we haven't made any yet. Yeah. But yeah. you can lose money. Yeah. <laughs> money is involved. It's yeah. a passion project, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And that's cool. what matters. Yeah. <laughs> How did Joe Rogan make it so well? Just the right people on the show? Uh, I think he made about a thousand. And then good things started to happen. Yeah. yeah no, yeah, he made way time. less. Than, it he, it yeah, took a long time. I think, like, probably around... 500 600 700 started really taking off for him but yeah, yeah just persistence you know yeah i think i follow you guys on youtube but what is your youtube channel that's a great question <laughs> uh it's a good reminder that we should plug our youtube channels at the end of this podcast yeah. <laughs> well we have two youtube channels rich Schley, ifhc films which stands for no idea i fucking hate that <laughs> <laughs> and our other youtube channel is mahalo my dude okay and Finally, can you guess the name of our podcast? No. Take a while. Just guess. feeding off each other. Shit talk? Feeding off each other. Oh, feeding off each other. Feeding <laughs> off each other. <laughs> That's good. That's deep. <laughs> yeah. Do you, you feel, feel, yeah, do you do feel, you feel well fed? <laughs> <laughs> um, and are you guys still making the same funny videos you've been doing for years? Yeah, that's the goal. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, we're trying to figure out what's. The, I got to get up to speed. Next step, you know. I haven't seen one for a while. Yeah, they're there. Yeah, there's awesome. a big backlog. Yeah. Yeah, you guys can sit down and watch for a while. I was, I was telling Crystal about them on the way over. Yeah, maybe we'll pull up some Mahalo, my dude. Okay. And you could. Uh, do we have a Sun Peaks video? No, not yet. No, not yet. When the Island Ride Park Tour series is out, we'll send you that one. Okay. Then you awesome. can. Uh, live vicariously through us and experience the bike parks. Oh, yeah. And get go. your butt up to Sun Peaks. I know. Yeah, I know. you should. Yeah. Whenever I go to Kamloops, my parents live right at the bottom of Valley View there, so I just ride there. <clears throat> but where uh, where can the people find you? What are you uh, doing? Uh, I have a YouTube channel. I'm, okay. I, I go in spurts. Uh, it's just, I think it's called Schley Rides, but Richie Schley. And Instagram, Richie Schley. S-C-H-L-E-Y. <laughs> R-I-C-H-I-E. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's my main um, stuff. The YouTube thing's not super easy. You, you, no. you, the editing is, for an amateur, is very time consuming. <laughs> Find someone else to do it. Yeah, that's what everybody says. But again, there's money involved. That's yes. true. Yes. So. Yeah. But I'm give, trying. Give them handlebars or free bike parts, <laughs> right? <laughs> See, get the, an intern. Here's the thing. Yeah. I'm older, so I don't know a bunch of young kids. Mm. And also, we don't have a scene like you guys because, you know, the skier Tanner Hall, he's like, you don't hire anybody. You just get some young kid, you put it on your Facebook, and they'll travel with you the whole year and work for free. And I'm like, I don't know any young kids. I don't even know if young kids follow me. All right. Well, slide into Richie Schley's DMs if you are a keen editor looking to break out in the industry. And this get a is free, your opportunity. A free pair of handlebars. There Work with go. a Hall of Famer. <laughs> there you go. Well, cool. thank you, man. Thank you thank for you uh, um, being here, first and foremost. I've had a great time working with you on various projects over the years. Cool. Thank you for Me your too. contributions to the mountain bike world. Thank you. Thank you for being you. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I hope you had a good time. Definitely. Crystal, were you entertained? Totally entertained. She's still so here. Awesome. That's great. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. I think a happy hour, a real happy hour is waiting for us outside nice. somewhere. Let's Thank get you. out there. Yeah. Cool. All right. Bye. 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 This Bye. is the end. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Feeding Off Each Other. Please subscribe for more great podcasts. <laughs>